Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to be working on the 1960 Boland's Ridematic steering and wheels. And you may have noticed we've already made some progress, but we'll go over that in just a second. Firstly, let's go over what we've already done before this video, which is we've completely fitted up all of the stub axles and steering rods. Now, we did this yesterday at time of recording, and we thought it would be a simple job of just whacking the stub axles in, putting the roll pins in, uh, putting new tie rods on, and just fixing it all up, but it turned out to take a bit longer than that because obviously we had to sort out the tracking and stuff which was quite time consuming nothing was especially difficult about it but that was the main reason we didn't want to do it on video was because it was a lot of jobs that aren't very videoable or would have been quite boring to watch us do but we've got all that set up now but then when we were testing it we noticed something if i hold the steering wheel uh, you can see there is a bit of movement in there which we obviously wanted to investigate, seeing as we put a lot of new parts on this uh, tractor and we don't really want tons of movement in it. It wasn't any of the high rod ends, so we deduced that it was the quadrant and we have the one from our parts chassis here so that we can kind of show you what was wrong with it. It's mainly where between the teeth of this and the gear on the end of the steering column, which we can't do anything about unless we get a new one of these and the gear at the bottom of the steering column cast, which is a whole lot of work that we're not going to do for this project because that's a bit overkill. And then the other wear was between this pin part and the hole that goes through the quadrant there. As you can see on this one, it's a bit of movement in there. So that's effectively what this movement is coming from. Now, at the moment, or at this very moment, we're not going to do anything about this. However, before this video, we have taken all of the measurements we would need if we were to drill out this hole and put a bushing in there to get rid of some of that movement. So we have all of that stuff ready if we were to do that in future and there's nothing stopping us doing that if we wanted to obviously fixing the wear in the teeth as i said before would be extremely time consuming and probably quite expensive to get one of those cast but our plan is today to get the wheels and tires on and see if this movement is still as substantial as it looks or whether it's just kind of minimal and we can live with it once we put the wheels on Another thing though, kind of separate from all of that, is we've made up replica parts of the engine brackets. Now, this is obviously useless for this project because we've already got them on here. However, if you remember back to what our parts chassis looked like, which is effectively another one of these tractors that had quite a few parts missing, so we were just using it as a reference and to steal a few parts for this tractor. However, during the time where I was taking a break from YouTube, we were thinking about what that tractor would actually need to take it back to a usable tractor. And one of the main things was it didn't have the engine brackets on it. So we thought, while we have the opportunity, there's all the space around it and there's nothing mounted to them, we would take the measurements and make up the copies now. And we've labeled which side is the top and the front. So these are perfectly ready now to go be put in a box, ready for whenever we get round to that project. So that is something to look forward to in the future, is taking that parts chassis and making it into an actual tractor, which that would probably be a full paint restoration. 
and everything like that. But that's two of the parts done for that already. But now, on to what we're going to be doing today. So as I said before, we're going to be putting the wheels on today. And to do that, we're going to have to change the rear tyres because although they hold air, these have got to be the most cracked, tubeless tyres I've ever seen. I'm not even sure how they hold air with all of these cracks and stuff in them. But they've done very well. But these will be coming off today and will be replaced by what is in this box. I've got some new rear tyres here, so that's good. A pair of those which we will switch onto there with new tubes. And obviously the front tyres we did in one of the first videos on this project. However, one of these uh, tube seems to be letting air out, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna change the tube in this one so that it holds air. And then after that, we can go on to the wheel bearings for the front wheels. However, more about that later. We have the tire changer set up and bolted to the floor here. So I think we'll start with the rear wheels and get the new tires put on. Got the first wheel here now, and it still has on it the original brass valve caps here. So we're gonna keep those to one side, see if we can clean them up a bit. I will just take the valve out of here so that we can let out some 60 year old air into the workshop. There we are. I'll put that behind me. And that now means that we can break the bead of this tire. It does look like they've got a tube inside them. Well, that would explain why they managed to hold air while being so cracked. But these are proper good quality tires the original Goodyear ones. One side. Really it illustrates all of the cracks on these tires when it pushes it down to break the bead. With the bead fully broken, we can now lever this tire off the rim. We've now fixed the rim to the top of the tire changer and put some tire seat soap around the bead. And we will now try to lever the tire up here and try to pull the tire above the rim. first part of it at least. Now just for the second half. There we are. That is the 60 year old tyre off the rim here. As you can see, we've got some nice original yellow paint on there. It's the ideal place to pull a paint match in future. Now we're probably gonna have to turn the rim upside down so we can get to the valve hole when it comes to fitting the new tire. It was quite difficult to get this first part of the tire on, so we did it off camera, but that is on now. And before that, we gave the rim a good clean up too. Now the next stage is to put the tube in and then get this other side of the tire on however we're going to do that off camera too because it's going to be quite difficult but before we do that just a quick kind of gtv top tip here with these tires these are 6-12s which are used on bolands uh, i think cub cadets wheel horses tons of stuff however 
The tyres and tubes are relatively hard to come by, and when you do find them, they are quite expensive. So, to cut down on costs a bit, we found the equivalent car-sized tube, which is a 145-155 R12 sized tube, and we've tested these uh, against the proper implement tubes uh, that people put in these for kind of durability and sizing and we are happy that these are a good equivalent uh, they're pretty much just as strong however because they are readily available they are about a third of the price so i would highly recommend using these if you have uh, tractors or other machinery with this sized tire now the issue is these rims have the valve hole which is designed for a TR15 sized valve however the valves on these tubes are TR13 size which means they are at risk of kind of getting pushed back into the rim and you lose the valve which means you can't top up the air or anything like that and you have to take the tire off to get to it unless you can see it through the hole but anyway that's disappearing down a bit of a rabbit hole about that. The way of stopping that is using these little adapters, which I'm pretty sure you can get on uh, popular online purchasing sites, which I won't name. But they just slip on over there, bridge the gap, and stops the valve disappearing into the wheel. So we're now going to put this tube in here and then get this other lip of the tire into the rim and hopefully we'll come back to you in not too long smiling because nothing's gone wrong we are back now and we're pretty happy with this didn't take too long to get on however the last part um it was quite difficult to get the last bead part over the rim but after a while we got it on and the new tire looks like it fits well and even better we actually got it the right way round that's good. Now we will move on to the other side and repeat the exact same process. We'll probably do that one off camera and come back to you in a second with our second finished rear wheel. So it took a while, but we've now got two rear tires on the rims. So those are ready to go on. And the next thing we're going to do is put some new tube in this front wheel and make sure that the tire doesn't have any punctures or anything that caused that tube to go down before we put a new one in. Now, because this wheel has got too small of a centre for this tyre changer, we have to use a different method, which we do over here at the vice. So we put this in here, which is just a big bolt with a square plate mounted or welded on the end of it. Just tighten that up in there. Put the first washer on, chuck the wheel on, other washer on there, then put the nut on here. Then obviously that needs to be tightened up properly to hold that in place. Then we just have to use good old fashioned tyre levers to get the tyre and tube off. So we'll be back with you in a bit. We found the leak and that was in the valve, unfortunately, but we've got a new tube in there and that's holding air now. So we're happy with that. The final piece of the puzzle for today are the wheel bushings or bearings that go in the front wheel. Now these are steel and this is one of the original ones. And if I put this on the stub axle, you can see they wore down massively. Now, obviously, these need a replacing, and we got a set of these from America, which are the replacement ones. They're a tiny bit longer, but otherwise they're the same size. If we put these on here, there's still a tiny bit of movement, but otherwise they are, I would say, dimensionally, dimensionally accurate. The only issue we suspect with these is the fact that this is steel and the stub axle is steel. Obviously, this is designed to wear first. However, there is a bit of... Um, wear on the stub axle, which we think could be induced for, from having steel bushings being used. So, our plan to rectify that is to get the original steel bushings, drill them out to one inch diameter, and insert one of these bronze bushings. 
which has the correct inside diameter. As you can see there, that's tight on the stub axle, so we're happy with that. So if we drill that out, press that in, and then that should give a nice tight fit, and the bronze will most definitely wear before the steel of the stub axle, so that protects that for the future. We have a one inch drill bit here, which is the same one that we used for the bushings in the front axle, because these are exactly the same size bushings. So we know this combination works, so that's a good thing. So what we're going to do now is get this chucked up in the lathe, uh, put this in the tailstock, and we can be drilling this out. I should say that our plan B, obviously, if this doesn't work, is we just use the normal replacements that we got from America. We have this all set up on the lathe now. We're going to be running a pretty low speed, plenty of cutting fluid. So let's go. The first one drilled now, and that is a good interference fit in there, so we're happy about that. Usually we would fit one of these up and test it on the axle, but seeing as if these don't fit, these are toast anyway, uh, we might as well make all of them now. So what we're going to do is production line these on the lathe and come back to you in a second with hopefully all of these ready to do some pressing. We now have all four of the steel bushings drilled and the advantage of using a bushing that we've already used before is that we already have a pressing tool for it so that's helpful and anyway, i'll put that in there get this relatively centered on here I don't think it's going to take much to press this in. We'll overhang a bit on the other side, but we just want this side to be flush. And that should be all that matters, really. There we are. And I'll take this out. And if I just quickly have a look at the result, that is pretty much flush on there. Now we just need to press the bushing into the wheel and we're going to use the same tooling for this. So I will just stabilize that as I... The press kind of so usually sorts it out quite well. There we are. We've fitted all of the new bushings on the front wheels now, so they are ready to go. And as you might see from looking at them, they all look very shiny because we put some rust prevention uh, oil compound stuff on there, which also makes original paint and rust look quite good. Gives a nice uh, oily rag patina look, which is what we're going for on this tractor. Now, all of these wheels are ready to go back on the tractor which we have lifted up a tiny bit so that we can put the wheels on now we're going to put the wheels on off camera mainly because having lifted this up it's really not very stable so we want to have two people on this so that one of us can be ready to catch it if we need to so we'll come back to you in just a minute with a big reveal of this thing back on its wheels Who'd have thought it would have taken so long to put four wheels on, but it has taken us quite a while today. 
First reason for that was on the rear hubs, the threads were very dirty, so we had to put a tap through each of those. And we found that the threads on the studs weren't very good either, so we switched them for the studs from our parts chassis, and that all fitted up nicely. That was the rear wheels on then, that was quite simple. Then we moved to the fronts where we couldn't actually get them on at first, so we had to take a bit of metal off the bushes and we took it off very slowly and in small increments to make sure they stayed tight, but that took quite a while to get perfect on both wheels. Then we encountered another issue, which was that on these rims, as you can see, there's like a tube part that goes through and then this dished part around the outside, which is just pressed on there. It's not actually held on by anything. And we found that on this wheel, the dished part had actually moved across, which was bad news for us. But what we did was we pushed it back to where it should be, which is where this side is up against the grease nipple, which you can't see because it's down there. But then we put a small tack weld there. We've ground it down a bit. It's not very noticeable, so that's good, but that'll just keep that wheel where it should be and stop it from moving again. On the other side, there was no movement, so we didn't bother looking at that, but that was just to stop the same issue happening again on this side, because the last thing we want is for us to be driving along and the wheels turning, but this centre bit isn't. But after we sorted that out, we've put washers uh, either side of the wheel, new E-clips on both sides, and that was the front wheels on too. So now we can give the steering a quick test. That feels nice and smooth on here, so that's good. We can be very happy with that, I think. And the tractor looks very different now that it's on all fours. And we're starting to make some good progress with this, we just need to keep it up. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.